Hello chemistry folks! We are going to learn about titrations. This is a lab procedure used to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. We will do ours using a neutralization reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide producing sodium chloride and water. Now in the titration we do, we will have some hydrochloric acid with unknown molarity. And we will have some sodium hydroxide that we know the molarity of. Next, we'll take a set amount of our unknown HCl and place it into a beaker. We'll use 10 milliliters. Then I'll use an indicator. An indicator is a substance which changes colors in different substances. In our situation, phenolphthalein, this chemical is always clear when it's in the presence of acids, and it changes to a pink color when it's in the presence of bases. Once we add that to the acid solution, it won't look any different. It'll still be clear. Now let's recall the equation that we're using for this experiment. When I balance the equation, I get ones across the board. So really what I have is a one-to-one -one ratio between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. That's gonna be key for our situation. So I'm gonna slowly be adding the sodium hydroxide over. As I add it over, it's gonna stay clear as long as hydrochloric acid is winning. But at some point in time, I'll have added enough sodium hydroxide so that they're actually winning. Then the solution will turn pink. Right around this time, you can say that the moles of hydrogen are equal to the moles of hydroxide. They're equal. Now remember, this is true because of that one-to-one -one ratio. Because of that one-to-one -one ratio, we can use this shortcut method. To calculate moles using solutions, we have to take the molarity times the volume. So we can go ahead and use this formula, MAVA equals MBVB. The A's stand for acids, the B's stand for base. Remember, if you're dealing with a situation that's not monoprotic, you're going to have to do a little more math. But in these situations with strong acids and strong bases, this works really well. So here's some of that phenolphthalein, and I'm going to add some drops of it to the test tube on the left, the acid, so you can see that it's still clear, and some drops to the base on the right. You'll see it turns that bright pink color. And for this lab, we're going to test the molarities of three unknown acids. So I'll go ahead and add some phenolphthalein to each one of these. Again, you'll notice it stays clear. It's always clear in the presence of acids. Next, let's measure out 10 milliliters of the hydrochloric acid that is unknown A. Remember, we don't know its molarity. Next, I have sodium hydroxide solution that I do know the molarity of. It's 0.1, and I'm going to slowly add that over to the hydrochloric acid. Now, I want to keep track of how much I'm adding, so I'm going to put it in this graduated cylinder. I'm going to put it up to 10, and as I add it over, I can keep track of how much the level goes down by. Now, I will mention, when you're doing a titration lab, label everything. The graduated cylinders, the pipettes, if you get things goofed up, you're going to know right away when the color change takes place. And now I'll slowly start adding the sodium hydroxide into the hydrochloric acid solution, keeping track of how much I use. I'm going to actually change the view so I can look from above so you can get a better view of this. I've used 10 milliliters, I need to fill it up again. As the sodium hydroxide hits the hydrochloric acid solution, sometimes you're seeing that pink color. In those small areas, NaOH is winning, the base is winning. But as I swirl it around, you can see that overall the acid's winning and it goes back to the clear color. We're looking for when it changes totally and doesn't go back to clear. I've used another 10 milliliters, need to fill it up again. Now I'm getting pretty close, but yeah, I'm going to need to fill it up again. And there the color change has finally taken place and it's not going back. If I look at the graduated cylinder, it says 4.4, which actually means I've already used 5.6 from this one. So I've had to add a total of 35.6 milliliters of NaOH to this hydrochloric acid solution to get it to neutralize. Now let's try out the math on this. I always like to put the acid on the left and the base on the right. And remember, since we had a one-to-one -one ratio, we're able to use this shortcut method with MAVA equals MBVB. Now we know that the volume of acid that we started with at the beginning was 10 milliliters. And we also know that the molarity of the base that we started with was 0.1 molar. And what we did then is we slowly dripped the base over until it changed from clear into pink. We found out it was a total of 35.6 milliliters. So this left us with one unknown variable. We use our algebra and solve and find out that the molarity of the unknown acid is 0.356 molar. And now on to unknown B. We'll start by measuring out 10 milliliters and put it into the empty Erlenmeyer flask. Then I'll get 10 milliliters of my 0.1 molar NaOH and put it in that graduated cylinder. Now I'll slowly start adding them and look for the color change. I don't want to go past that point.
Well, I've run out of my tent, so I'll need to go ahead and fill it up again. And back to slowly adding until we can get that color change to remain constant. And there it is. So when we look at the side of the graduated cylinder, it reads three milliliters, which means we've used seven from this one in the first ten, so a total of 17 milliliters of sodium hydroxide to neutralize the hydrochloric acid. So now back to the math. Let's set up our MAVA formula. We know that we use 10 milliliters of the unknown acid. We know that our base was 0.1 molar. We know that we use 17 milliliters of our base to get this to neutralize. Then we do our algebra and figure out that we have a molarity of acid that is 0.17 molar. And finally, we'll go on to unknown C. We'll get 10 milliliters of that into the Erlenmeyer flask. Then we'll get 10 milliliters of our sodium hydroxide and slowly start adding it over. And now we have a color change. And when I go ahead and take a look at the graduated cylinder, it's empty. We've used all of it. And now for your final set of math. Go ahead and you try it out. Give it a shot, use the formula, and figure out what is the molarity of the unknown acid. Thank you.